You want to build yourself a custom mechanical keyboard, but you have no idea where to start? Let me explain. First, I want to let you know that this video is cut up into chapters. I will explain everything more or less from scratch. So if I talk about something you already know, just check the chapter markers for something that is of interest for you. Before I'll explain you how a mechanical keyboard works and how you can build one yourself, let me give you a quick keyboard terminology course. There are a few words you should know before entering the custom mechanical keyboard hobby. The most important word is probably thock or thocky. That describes a very specific deep typing sound of a keyboard. It sounds something like that. Pretty nice, right? There's also clack or clacky, which describes kind of the opposite typing sound. It's a little bit higher pitched and sounds something like that. Also, probably better than your average typing sound, right? By the way, if someone speaks about the sound of the keyboard, he or she most likely means the typing sound. The keyboard itself doesn't make any sound. There are different layouts. The two most prominent layouts would be the ANSI layout and the ISO layout. Basically, like you see here, the keys are differently positioned and the ISO layout has a big enter key. Depending on where you live, you most likely already use one of the two. Also, there are different form factors for keyboards, like 40%, 60%, 65%, 75%, 10-key less, 96% or 1800 compact and full-sized keyboards, with the percentage roughly telling you how many keys of a full-sized keyboard in percent your form factor has. Then there is modding, which is pretty self-explanatory. We also have flex, which describes how much a keyboard bends inwards or how bouncy it is when you press a key. And there is lubing. Lubing means that you lubricate your switches or stabilizers to make them smoother or sound different. But more on flex and lubing later in the video. There is more terminology out there in the wild, I know, but this will be enough for this video. Everything else I will explain along the way. Okay, let's begin with the basics. What is a mechanical keyboard? A mechanical keyboard is a keyboard where you have mechanical actuated switches, hence the name mechanical keyboard. These switches are made up of a housing, a stem, a spring and the leaf. The leaf is under force and is held back by the legs of the stem. So if you press a key, the force of your finger pushes the stem under the keycap into its housing. Thereby, the leaf can relax and press against its counterpart. The electrical circuit is closed and the symbol shows up on your screen. If you release the key, the spring pushes the stem back at the leaf and the circuit is open again. Speaking of switches and springs and stems, the next question arises. What parts do you need to build a custom mechanical keyboard? Let's start with the case. The case is the housing of the keyboard. It is basically the home of all the other parts for your keyboard. A case can be made from different materials like aluminium, plastic or even wood. You can also buy them in various different colors, finishes and forms. The materials affect the weight, the haptics and the sound of the keyboard. The form dictates how many keys you can use and where you can put them. For example, if you buy yourself a 65% keyboard case, you can't change it to a 10 key list later down the road. So be sure what layout you want and which keys you need before you buy a keyboard. The second part you need is the PCB. PCB stands for Printed Circuit Board. You can think of it like the nervous system of your keyboard. On the PCB, all the wiring is pre-installed so that the only thing you must do is to put in all the switches. But there are two kinds of PCBs. If you search for it, you will most likely find the term hotswap PCB and soldered PCB. 
On the back side of a hot swap PCB, you will find little sockets under the pinholes for the switches. You can just press the switch into its place and it's wired. You can also just pull the switches out again and change them with new ones you want to try out. The problem with hot swap is that you have a fixed layout, meaning you cannot change the layout of your keyboard without buying another fitting PCB with a different layout. If you buy a soldered PCB, you don't have that problem. Most soldered PCBs have different possible layouts that you can choose from. But of course you must solder in all the switches, so you can not quickly change the switches of your keyboard. Because for that you need the tools and the time to desolder every single switch. I would highly recommend getting a hotswap PCB in the layout you want if available, because it is just less pain to deal with and you can change the switches the easy way if you want to change them. The third part you need is the plate. The plate is essentially used to hold all the switches in place. Like the case, they can be made from different materials like aluminium, brass or different plastics. The materials again affect the sound of the keyboard but can also make it have more flex. Flex is seen as something good in the keyboard community. You could say the more flex the better. But in the end it's personal preference. Metal plates like aluminium and brass plates are usually a little bit stiffer compared to the plastic plates. Some plates and sometimes even PCBs have flex cuts to increase the flex of the keyboard. And there are also people that use half plates or no plates at all just to increase the flex. However, not only the plate plays into the amount of flex, also the mounting style of the keyboard. The mounting style describes how the PCB is held in place in the keyboard case. There are different mounting styles, for example gasket mounted or top mounted keyboards. Gasket mounted means that the PCB is held between two soft gaskets, so if you press a key, the PCB is pressed into the gasket and it feels softer to type on the keyboard. Top mounted means that the PCB is just screwed on top of a few stems inside the case, so there is no real possibility for flex. But don't be too bothered about mounting styles right now, there are more important things about a keyboard you need to know. Like the switches for example. Switches are a very important part of your keyboard because they are more or less responsible for the feel and the sound of your keyboard. There are linear switches, tactile switches and clicky switches. But clicky switches are considered as maybe you should look for a different hobby. Because the click of the switch in most cases negates all the benefits you get from a custom mechanical keyboard. So with clicky switches ruled out of the way, we are left with linear switches and tactile switches. The difference is that with tactile switches you have a slight bump while pressing the switch to the bottom because the legs of the stem have a small bump. With linear switches it is a smooth bottom out experience. Here the legs do not have a bump. Stabilizers are important to the sound of your keyboard. They are mandatory to support your modifier keys because the keys are so wide. If the stabilizers rattle the keyboard sounds cheap, even if it isn't, so you should not cheap out on them and mod them if possible to make them the best they can be. Next, keycaps. Keycaps in my opinion are the hardest part to come by, at least if you want a specific colorway and or good quality. You see them all the time and the most people see from your keyboard are the keycaps, so you want them to be good. If you search for keycaps, you will find the words ABS and PBT in combination with keycap sets. They simply are two different materials used for keycaps. ABS keycaps are known for their vibrant colors and sharp legends, at least if you buy them from a good manufacturer. Sometimes after you use them for a while, you can see a shine on the keycaps you use the most often. Some people don't like that, some people don't care, you have to decide where you stand on that. Also ABS keycaps have a more clacky sound that is a little bit higher pitched. PBT keycaps on the other hand have a more thocky sound that is a little bit lower pitched. They will not develop the shine the ABS keycaps can develop but they can be scratched a little bit easier, so take care of them. Also they are known for more muted colors that are less vibrant and the legends can look a little bit less sharp sometimes. 
There are probably even more differences between ABS and PBT, but um, enough for now. Finding good quality keycaps in stock isn't that easy. Sure, you can find keycap sets all around the internet, but they most likely have poor quality, meaning the thickness of the plastic and the sharpness and overall quality of the legends on the keycaps. The thickness affects the typing sound of the keyboard. To put it simply, the thicker the keycap, the better the sound. I would recommend spending a little bit more on your keycaps just to be sure you get the ones you like. What you also need is a cable. Sometimes a cable is delivered with the keyboard, but most of the time you need to buy an extra cable. You can just simply use a cable for 10 bucks or get crazy and buy yourself a custom coiled aviator cable. The sky's the limit, but I would put my budget in the keyboard, not the cable. One last thing you should consider is lubing your switches. If you lube your switches and stabilizers, they will sound and feel better. It takes a lot of time and because you need to open every single switch and then you have to lube it carefully and then you have to close it again, but it's worth it in my opinion. You can also pay someone to lube your switches, but I have no experience with that. Um, I just know that it exists. So if you want to lube your switches, you need a fine brush, a switch opener and the lube. If you want, you can buy other accessories to make the process faster, but they are not necessary. And with that, you now know every part you need to build a custom mechanical keyboard. To recap, you need a case, a PCB, a plate, switches, stabilizers, keycaps and a cable. If you want, you can lube your switches. For that, you need a switch opener, a brush and some lube. You can buy all the parts you need from vendors all around the globe. There are a few vendors for every region of the world and I would recommend buying from them if they have what you want because you will save yourself customs and expensive shipping. If you want to buy a keyboard or a keycap set that is not available anymore, you can try your luck on the aftermarket. You can get in touch with people who sell keyboards and keycaps on eBay, Discord groups or Reddit. But be careful not to get scammed and be prepared to pay a lot more than the original price. The last thing I want to tell you about are the ways you can get custom mechanical keyboards. There are two ways how you can acquire one. I call them fully built and keyboard kit. Actually, there is one more option if you want to buy a keyboard made by KB Defense. They offer every part as standalone and you have to buy the case, the PCB and the plate separately. If you do so, take a close look that every part works hand in hand, but usually you can find that information in the name or the description of the parts. Fully built, you could say, is the easy way to build a custom mechanical keyboard. You can just simply buy yourself a pre-assembled keyboard made by Keychron or Glorious. You can change the switches and keycaps and you can mod the keyboard to make it even better. Just take a look around the internet. By the time you watch this video, there are probably even more keyboards like the GMMK Pro, the Keychron Q1 and the Keychron Q2 on the market. If you buy a keyboard like that, it comes with everything you need and is ready to go out of the box. If you buy yourself a keyboard kit, you will get the keyboard case, a fitting PCB and a plate. Sometimes you get stabilizers, a carrying case, a cable and or some other accessories, but that strongly depends on the kit you're buying. So always read what's included. What is definitely not included are keycaps and switches. So keep that in mind because the cost for the kit, the keycaps, the switches and all the other accessories you may need will add up fast. Also, most keyboard kits today are still getting released via group buys and uh, the same goes for keycap sets. Basically, in a group buy you pay for a keyboard or a keycap set that is not yet produced. After a month or two, the group buy closes and the offer will be placed at the manufacturer. Now you have to wait. It can take six months or even two years, depending on various different variables like material shortages, pandemics, wars. I mean, at this point, we can probably add super volcanoes and asteroid impacts as well to the list. What I want to say is, 
If you want to buy a keyboard that is not in stock and need to be manufactured, it takes time. Not all the parts are always available. I know it sucks, but it's already getting better and vendors try to keep items in stock if it's possible. And that's it. You now know most of the important stuff about custom mechanical keyboards and how to get them. I probably missed something, but I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. I hope that I could help at least a few of you come closer to the dream of a fully custom mechanical keyboard. And if so, I would appreciate a like to see that I helped you. I think that's, I think that's a fair deal. If you have any questions, just write a comment and I try to answer as fast as possible. Until then, have fun building your keyboard, have a great rest of the day and stay safe.